Right, first things first, um, I'm doing this old school because I don't have a selfie stick. So if it's wobbling, it's just because I've been prancing around the garden with um, dogs for a while. And um, <laughs> you'll have to excuse it. Look, what this is, is a, a clip of um, a dog that's come in and what the dog is and the issues that, that basically are blocking the owners um, being able to advance uh, in what they want to achieve with the dog. So first off, what I'm going to show you is the dog um, on, on lead, okay, uh, demonstrating beautifully something that's called the, the opposition reflex. I'll talk about it whilst, whilst the clip's played. Um, and it's something that plays a pretty, you know, significant part really in why the owners are struggling or the owner is struggling um, to reach the goals that she wants. Um, the second thing that I'm going to show you is the dog's uh, handler awareness in terms of how significant... <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> in terms of how significant um, are my cues to the dog. I'm going to use the same cue there as I'm going to use uh, a little bit later in another clip that I'll add on. And um, I just want you to see uh, for, yourself <laughs> for yourself whether or not you consider um, there to be any beneficial progress or whether or not you think that the dog is um, understanding okay whether there's any communication taking place and whether the dog appears to be um, benefiting as well as myself from that communication well it's just as well I <laughs> it's just as well I warned you it's gonna be a freaking wobbly video um, have a watch and see what you think cheers Bruno, come. Bruno, come. Come. Bruno, come. Bruno, come. Bruno, come. Come. Bruno, come. Bruno, come. This is a really simple short little clip but it demonstrates something beautifully. We picked up this young guy this morning, he's 18 months old, he's an entire male and what I want to show is what's termed the opposition reflex. Okay, So basically I pull on the lead to bring the dog towards me and the dog pulls in the opposite direction. Now what a lot of people do is when they get a dog as a puppy they basically allow this behaviour to instill itself. All right, So you walk along with a pup and the pup at about 9 weeks old hasn't really had much of a lead on it before plumps its backside on the ground and, and just digs in, doesn't want to move forward. And what people tend to do is then teach the pup that that's absolutely fine by moving back towards them, picking them up, cooing the pup and trying to encourage them on with a piece of food or with some praise rather than just teaching the pup from that moment in time that when you feel pressure, give to it. Rather than fighting against it, give to it. And I just want to show you with this guy here, um, he's a lovely little dog. Um, he's wearing a remote collar over there just for habituation purposes, okay, to get him used to the weight and the feel of the collar. The transmitter for it is there, okay, so he's not got any remote collar being used against him. But what I want you to do is focus on, I'm going to see if I can zoom this in a little bit, and what I basically want you to do is focus on his response when I put pressure on this lead, okay, so I'm just using a standard flexi lead, and I'll tell you when I'm going to put pressure on it. Just watch his body language. I'm going to put pressure on this lead now. Look, you see him sinking down against that? And every, look at that, look. Now turn this self away. Well, I'm going to put the pressure on again. Put the pressure on again. He's dropping himself into it. Watch. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Tight line. Pull him back. Look what he does. Let me show you this from the side. So I'm going to put the pressure on now. Look. Dropping his body weight in. Pulling against it. See him leaning forwards there? Watch when I release the pressure, which I'm going to release now. There he goes. And I'm going to put the pressure on again. He's peeing up absolutely everything. Pressure on. Look. Look at his body language. Look. Absolutely no interest in who's at the other end of the lead um, or anything else other than what he wants to do at the minute, which is fine. You know, that's uh, par for the course, and that's entirely up to the owner and the dog. But I just want to show again. I'm sure they won't mind me demonstrating this because this is simply the fact of his response to pressure on the lead and on comes the pressure on the lead there instantly it's like fishing you know it's like you just feel counter pressure as soon as you put it on and i'm going to try and walk him now i'm going to try and put some direction on him with this lead okay so here we go look look at that 
fighting against. Look. Confident little dog. Pressure's going on. Pressure's going on again, turning away, trying to trying to use his four quarters instead to pull against the pressure instead. Watch when I release the pressure. And I'm gonna put it on again, drop down, pull into it. He basically learned, he's been taught to pull on a lead. We'll undo it. Okay, yesterday we were discussing how um, with some dogs you want to uh, work with reward, you know, you want to use positive reinforcement, you want to use food because um, it's good fun uh, uh, and it expedites training and, the, you know, uh, you get decent responses from it as well in certain situations. Um, but we were also talking about what happens when you get a dog that isn't interested in food, you know, that the environment just completely, even if it's a relatively sterile sort of environment, it completely blows um, food out the water so what i've got is just like a pouch of let me show you some wet food here okay so i'm just going to take some of this out so i think we'd agree most dogs most dogs are going to be pretty happy with a scoff full of that for nothing so we just i just want to show you come here mate he's got an e-collar on and he's got an e-collar on because he's wearing it just simply for habituation purposes okay it's not being used uh, it's just to let him get used to the, the feel and the weight of the collar As you can see, he's all over me like a rash. You'd think he wants the loo. He's already been twice. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. See that? Look at that. Look at the resistance on the lead. Just on the lead. Look, look at that. So if I let this go, it's ridiculous. I'll try again look. Good. Look. Just complete and utter opposition reflex to the pressure of this lead. Look. Look at that. I'm going to show him again the full. Now what? Stupid stink. Now what? Okay, so here we go about four minutes later, something like that, four or five minutes later. Bit of stress? Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Bit of fear, redirected aggression, candor avoidance, and bond deterioration. That's what you see in here. See that what I'm doing is I'm establishing myself as insignificant in the relationship. So basically, I, I'm, I'm teaching the dog that what, rather than be with me and interact with me and move when I move and pay attention to me, what I want him to do is shoot out to the end of a lead, drag me, ignore me, and refuse to have any sort of interaction with me whatsoever. That's my idea of a companion animal. Good boy. Good boy. Come. Good. I 
Okay, the point's been made. I won't labour it. 